Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Three Chord Dave, and today we're talking about a brand new guitar design from Gibson. That's actually from 1957, but hey, it's, it's, it's weird. Yes, folks, we're going to talk about the Gibson Theodore in just a moment. But first, can you just hit that subscribe button, please? Because you've been here a few times now. You've got to hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button while you're at it. And hey, let's go all in. Hit the notification bell and choose all notifications. And that way you'll never miss a Three Chord Dave video. We do some cool stuff on this channel. Don't want you to miss out on it. Some great videos come out every single week. And every Saturday, Three Chord Dave Live, we talk and we're talking music, we're talking guitars, and occasionally you give away a guitar. So if you want to be part of that, come and join us every Saturday. Make sure you're subscribed to do so. Now let's talk about this Gibson Theodore thing because it's very interesting. Now, first of all, it will be popping up here in the different colors and things, and we'll see what we think of it. That's not real, but it does kind of remind me of a vase. But anyway, uh, <laughs> All that aside, um, Ted McCarty. If you don't know who Ted McCarty is and you're in the guitar hobby uh, or you're a guitar person, you really should do some research or maybe you're just on the wrong channel. I don't know, but Ted McCarty, okay. In terms of Gibson, he joined Gibson in 1949 as a CEO. He later became the president, but he, this, this dude was an engineer and he was, he was heavily involved in what Gibson were doing. So he took over Gibson at a time when it was, a, it was a failing company, let's be honest. They weren't doing particularly well post-World War II. And, you know, they were, they were kind of dragging their feet on some things. But Ted McCarthy came in and he did start to revolutionize the business. It became the golden age of Gibson under his stewardship. And let me tell you, if it wasn't for Ted McCarthy, there would be no Les Paul. There would be no Firebird. There would be no SG. There would be no Flying V, Explorer, or the modern, in fact, as well. And those latter three all came about from for one particular reason. So there was this dude from California. His name was Leo. You may have heard of him and his company. He was going around telling dealers and all kind, anyone who'd listen, that Gibson were done. They were an old style company. They had no new ideas. They weren't going into the future like his company were, and you should buy a Stratocaster. And he was right. Gibson were not producing a lot of cool new things at the time. And Ted McCarthy heard this coming back to him many times. Hey, this Californian dude is saying this. Obviously, people were saying Leo or whoever, Mr. Fender, were saying this about you. And Ted, being the genius that he was, was like, all right, I'm going to open it up. Anybody who works at the company can design a guitar. Send us, bring us your designs, and if we pick it, it'll get produced. So, you know. People, whoever it was, worked in the company, were bringing in designs all the time. So that led to, of course, the 1958 NAMM show. And what was produced for that, of course, we now know, was the Flying V, the Modern, and the Futura, which became the Explorer. And, you know, that did revolutionize Gibson. It did make people go, wait a minute, this is incredible. So all kinds of things. Okay, so never mind just reshaping the guitar design and everything with Gibson. They, they redesigned kind of Gibson as a company and it really took off from there. But word on the street has always been that those three designs were the best of 13 designs that were very close to being produced. In fact, it could have been a different three. It could have been five, you know. So, so if this is the start of an archive collection, as Gibson are calling it, we may have another nine guitars coming and hopefully and I don't know if this is what's happening, but hopefully one a month for the rest of the year. That'd be very cool, Gibson, if you're out there. Do that, because uh, we'd all be excited for brand new guitar styles every month. But please don't make them all custom shops, because we don't have money for custom shop guitars. You know what's, if you've seen the price of gas lately, it's, it's crazy. So anyway, this, we won't talk about it. But um, yeah, look. This is interesting, it's, it's very interesting. Ted McCarthy, as I said, one of the most influential people, and they've called this guitar the Theodore because he designed it. And he designed it in 1957 on the 18th of March. That's why it's dropping today. Now, Ted McCarthy used to like sketching ideas while in business meetings, like designing guitars, essentially. Sounds like a pretty cool job, if you ask me. But he would do that, kind of draw a sketch, and he would take it further if he thought that it had something, but it would just go into the 
probably hundreds of drawings he had done, if not. Now, what has become the Theodore, I don't think he would have called it the Theodore if he produced it in the 50s or 60s myself. But obviously, Ted did not think that this was a guitar that they needed to produce. Now, why 318 of these are being produced? Why not like a, a, a hundred thousand? And, or just like USA models? Well, it was the 18th of March when this picture was drawn, which you get a copy of the picture when you buy the guitar, by the way, which is a nice touch from Gibson, I do have to say. So in America, they write the date, three for the month, 18 for the day, and then the year after that. Now the rest of the world, we do it the other way. We write the day first, and then the month, and then the year. So to us, it's like, that makes no sense. But to Americans, that makes perfect sense. So that's why there's 318 of these guitars. Three different colors. So you got ebony, cherry, and natural. And all three of those are getting 106 uh, models produced. So that's, you know, that's interesting. Now, there are some available still online. So Toman, for example, have sold out of cherry and ebony, but they have some naturals left at the time of recording. You want to get your skates on if you want one. Um, but it's not an exciting design, I don't think. Like, I don't think this is anyone's seen this and gone, wow, that's the guitar I was waiting for them to release. But it is interesting. And I have to say, I've given Gibson a lot of crap over the time I've been running this channel. I've called them out on stuff and, and you know, said when they were doing stuff that was stupid. Adam Jones guitar case for a guitar that you cannot purchase. That's a good one, Gibson. Congratulations on your hilarity. Uh, the Rally Road nonsense, which, Look, people have made better videos than I could make about it this week. Complete nonsense. Um, it's just the t-shirts, the banners, the, the pennants, the, the all kinds of nonsense. Mark Agnesi had it correct when he made his Make Gibson Great Again caps way back in his norms days. But anyway, getting sidetracked. I gotta say, I, I wanna applaud Gibson for this. I think this is a great move. This is something different for them. It's a new model. It's something we haven't seen before and now it's out there. So yes, these are custom shop models. They're $5,000 each. They're fairly basic and standard though. Uh, so you never know, they might make a, a standard lineup run of these at some point in the future. And Gibson, if you're listening, I think that'd be a great idea. And I'm excited to see what this archive collection actually brings to the forefront. Because as I said, there's apparently 13 models in total that were very close to production in 1958 for the NAMM show. So maybe there's another nine to come. I really think that would be amazing. And I'm looking forward a lot to see what they do with the archive collection. If this is the start, it's a positive start. Now, look, it's an alder body, two piece alder body with a maple centerpiece. It's a mahogany neck. It's nothing fancy. It's nothing fancy, but it's different. And you got to applaud that when they do something different and it's not a lifestyle product, it's a guitar. That's what Gibson should be doing and focusing on. So well done Gibson, I like it. I like what you've done here. And hopefully you'll do, you know, not custom shop models for the rest of it as well. Cause the rest of us want to pick up some cool stuff and you know, we don't have five grand we can spend on a guitar every week. So let's do it. If you're going to bring out ten, nine more guitars, let's do some USA models, all right? Anyway, guys, that is the video for today. Let me know what you think of the Gibson Theodore, why they should not have called it the Gibson Theodore. But anyway, let me know what you think of it. I, I As I said, I think it's very promising. I, I like what they're doing. I like that they've brought out a new model, so to speak, even if there is only 318 of them in the world. That and probably five of them will ever get played. But anyway, uh, <laughs> What can you do? Let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to join me for Three Chord Dave live on Saturday. We have a lot of fun. You will enjoy it. It's going to be great. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.